Hello again. I hope you've had a lovely day today. I bet you had a wonderful time, didn't you? I'd love to know what you were doing. When I was a child, I was a little stubborn. Do you know what that means? I wanted to do things by myself. I thought that I was too old to ask for help, that people would think that I was still a baby. But we all need help sometimes. Today, Benjamin learns about what can be achieved when we all work together. And he sees we've been from the giant yesterday, now we're going to look at the opposite end, an ant. On December the 5th, Benjamin opened the next door and found a little ant. The little bear continued his long, long journey. Sometimes when he felt tired or discouraged, he would look up and see the little black dot in the sky. It was the eagle following the star and it cheered the little bear and gave him energy to continue. In the middle of a field, the little bear discovered a large anthill. The ants all stopped work to greet him, all except for one ant who was busy levelling a pile of sand, one grain at a time. The little bear watched her in amazement. Why are you doing that? he asked. My friend is at the bottom of the pile. I'd be glad to help you, said the little bear. No, no, your paws are much too big, said the ant. You could hurt my friend. Ant, said the little bear, you will never remove the sand pile by yourself, even if you live to be a hundred years old. The ant paused for a moment and then said, I'm going to try and save my friend anyway. And she continued to work. Suddenly there was movement among the other ants. They'd been listening. The little bear watched as the ants began to help, each carrying one grain of sand off at a time. Before long, the entire pile was gone and the little ant crawled out safe and sound. That was amazing, said Benjamin. You see, Benjamin, said Mother Bear, faith can move mountains. Let's go and see what we've got or who we've got to our advent window. Well, December the 5th now, we're, we're kind of really picking up a pace now about our, our service and our, our Advent time. I hope you're enjoying your chocolate Advent calendars. I know certainly I am. Uh, should we have a look at the character for, for today and see who it is that's in our, in our special sock? Here it is. Let's have a look. It's a man carrying some food. One of the things that I enjoy about Christmas is food, about all the lovely scrummy things that we get to eat. Uh, I think I talk about later or at some point about bacon sandwiches. I love bacon sandwiches on Christmas. And I love the turkey and all the trimmings and the pigs in blankets and everything else that goes with it. We love to sit down and have a really nice meal at Christmas. Maybe this man seems to have brought salad. There might be some broccoli in there, but he's brought that I think for, for Jesus as well, because we can all bring our food gifts to baby Jesus and when we're eating our dinner let's not forget what it's all about that Christmas is all about Jesus so I'm going to pop this now into the scene um, and just fill up that picture a little bit more So I hope you have a really nice food. I hope you're enjoying all the chocolate from your calendars and everything that you're eating uh, and all the fun times that you're going to have as you run up to Christmas. Come back tomorrow and we'll see who our next character is.
Have you thought about what you want for Christmas? Have you written a list? Today's story is all about a little boy who decides to ask Father Christmas for a whole range of things. So let's hear that now. Tim's Christmas wish list. One bright winter's day, Tim went dancing across the garden singing, Oh, what fun, I do believe that it will soon be Christmas Eve. He was really excited about getting his presents from Santa Claus. Come on, Max, he said to his cuddly mouse. Let's go and knock on Mrs. Miller's door. The two friends slipped through the fence. Ah, here come some visitors, laughed the old neighbour. She made them some hot chocolate and asked, Well now, Tim, have you written your Christmas wish list out for Santa Claus? No, said Tim, a little surprised. I don't know how to write. Well, you could draw what you want, she suggested, and gave him a crayon and a sheet of paper. Half an hour later, Tim had filled five pages with his drawings, but he kept thinking of even more wishes. I'd like a real elephant, and an aeroplane, so I could go and see Grandma, and a super sports car for Max, and Mrs Miller shook her head in disbelief. Oh, Tim, but that's an awful lot. When I was your age, Santa Claus only brought us one present. Hmm, said Tim. Well, supposing I wrote another wish list for Max, he can't do it himself. But all the same, Tim stopped drawing and went home, deep in thought. At home, Tim and his mother struck some bright stars on the windows, then they baked some Christmas cookies. You've done that really nicely, said Mum. Santa Claus will certainly be very pleased with you for giving me so much help. Do you think he'll also see my wish list? asked Tim. Of course he will, just put it on the windowsill. When Tim went to sleep, he dreamt about Santa Claus. He came on his sleigh and he brought Tim's presents, a picture book, a toy set, chewing gum, a toy garage, a sports car, a horse, a teddy bear, and so on and so forth. But when Santa Claus brought the giant elephant into the room, all the windows fell out. And when he pushed the moon rocket in the roof of the house, it flew away. Ah, Tim woke up, covered with sweat. Help, Max, what are we going to do? If Santa Claus really brings everything I asked for, there won't be any room left in the house. I must go and get the wish list now. Tim ran to the window. Too late. It had already gone. Tim ran to Mum's room and slid under the blanket next to her. Hello, she murmured, half asleep. What's the matter? Did you have a bad dream? Yes, sobbed Tim and told her everything. And Mrs Miller said that we're only allowed to wish for one present. That's not quite right, Mum smiled. You can wish for everything, but you just can't have everything. At least not all at once. Do you mean Santa Claus knows what he should bring me? Of course, said Mum. He's very clever. Christmas Day dawned at last. Tim could hardly sit still. He was so excited. All the same, he tidied his room very neatly helped with the cooking and then he, Max and Mum decorated the Christmas tree. In between though, he kept running to the window to see if Santa Claus was on his way. However, it was not until after they'd had their Christmas dinner that the great moment arrived. Ooh, isn't that lovely? Santa Claus had lit the lights on the Christmas tree and underneath it lay Tim's presents. A super toy garage, a funny Mickey Mouse lamp, an exciting game with dragons and a pair of pyjamas covered with sports cars. And what's this? Eagerly Tim took the last present out of its wrapping paper. Look mum, it's a big book and my wish list has been stuck in the front and there's lots of empty pages. Mum laughed. That's a really clever present Santa Claus has given you because with all those empty pages now you can draw whatever you want for your birthday for Easter or any time in between. Then Tim, Max and Mum danced merrily around the room singing, oh what fun, hip hip hooray, how we all love Christmas Day. Can you imagine if Father Christmas had brought an elephant for Tim? What would his house have looked like? Where would he have put it? Sometimes we can think about all the things we would like to have, but really they're not very practical or helpful. I'm sure that Tim much preferred his toy garage and Mickey Mouse lamp for more than an elephant that would fill his bedroom. And can you imagine the smell? Oof. Sometimes the best presents we can have are actually the ones that cost the least. A cuddle from our parents, 
a walk with someone we haven't seen for ages, a game with our best friends. I wonder what you'd like for Christmas. Anyway, I hope you get a good night's sleep and hopefully we'll have another story time tomorrow. Good night.